Have you ever wondered about those who dream of a better life versus those who create it? Are you waiting to accomplish your dreams and goals? Welcome to Create It Now, now. with your host, Jonathan Stowe, Don Elizabeth, and the business hypnotist, A.J. Boyd. For the next 60 minutes, we're going to put your dreams into motion and create it now. now. The phone lines are open at 73. 731-1230. That's 731-1230. Or toll free 1-866-820-5528. That's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's bring on the host and create it now. Now. Here is Jonathan Stone, Don Elizabeth, and A.J. Boyden. Hello and welcome to the Create It Now radio show where today we're going to be talking about Breast Cancer Awareness Month for the month of October, Breast Cancer Awareness. Before we get into the topic, I just want to say thank you to those who are giving us shout outs on Twitter and Facebook. Um, we're keeping track of it all. So if you have any questions or thoughts during the show today, either find us on Facebook, Create It Now or Twitter. Um, at Twitter, you can find us at Dream It, Create It. And I'm on here now, so t- go ahead, send us a message, a thought. And we are talking about Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So, first of all, Jonathan, why don't you tell us a little bit about what Breast Cancer Awareness Month is? Absolutely. Um, first of all, I want to say hello and welcome everybody. And even Dawn is participating in Breast Cancer Awareness Month. She has a pink microphone cover. Yes. I am all about it. So here we go. And uh, when, so tell us a little bit more about what it is. What are we supposed to do during this month? Is it for everybody? Is it just women? Well, no. Um, Breast Cancer Awareness Month actually started um, in 1985, but just more for like awareness for women to go get checked. Um, to go get mammograms and stuff like that. But a lot of people have different myths and were very scared to get mammograms because they thought that could possibly cause cancer, um, but which is not true. And men and women can both get breast cancer. I mean, it's very rare in man, in a man to ha- be able to, to have it. But it's still um, a possibility. It is a possibility. Yeah. Uh, if you feel a lump or anything, you should definitely go get checked. And one of our guests today, Alicia Skye, is going to really help us along with all of that. Yeah, um... In my family, there's been different women who have found lumps. Luckily, they've all been benign, and but it's been a, a more increasing thing within my family of people actually finding lumps. And so even though I'm not at the age that we're supposed to go and get these tests, I'm still, because of the family history of it, I now am starting to have to go get those tests done. So, And they're starting them younger in my family, and my cousins who are a lot younger than me have to get tested now and stuff too. Yeah, it's scary, but... Uh, Thank God, you know, there's, this is worldwide too, um, everywhere in England and everything. This month of October is uh, Breast Cancer Awareness. Yeah. Um, when I ran my marathon, I ran it, um, it had to do with Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It had to do with bringing that out to, and I also did the Locks of Love, and a lot of the different charities that I help out have to do with breast cancer. No, that's great that you participate. Um, one of the biggest things is it didn't come actually online where people can get all this information until about 1998. Oh, and when I was started. born. No. Yes. <laughs> Just <Yeah>. kidding. <laughs> so how come they used the pink ribbon? When did that come about? Oh, my God. Um, they did the pink ribbon. They started in 1993. But I think Susan, the Susan Coleman one started it in 1991. Do you know why they started with the pink? Um, I do know that it has to do with um, the hope for the future and the fear of breast cancer. It kind of brings that thought when we see it. I know right. that much about it. Well, I think it was derived from the AIDS awareness one, the red oh, one. Oh, because they had the red one. They had and the red one, And then the breast one, cancer yes. came up with the pink. For the pink nice. for awareness. Yes. Yeah. It's great to have a symbol of some sort so that when you see it, you already know. Like the NFL is using it. They did it. Um, they have it on the fields. Right. And, and on they, their shoes. A lot of them wear it on their And cleats. the um, Miami Dolphins, they have pink gloves to help yes. for. So anytime you see pink, it helps bring that awareness about. So it's really good to have a major symbol like that so that every time you see it, you think about it. Yeah. And it, it's great. And with the Lisa stuff coming on the show, 
just for us to be able to do a show that gives people awareness and really, you know, this isn't something to play around with. You know, go to the doctor, get checked. Um, you know, if you feel a lump, though, but here's the thing. Majority of times, it is actually, it's not cancer. It's benign. But so, you don't know unless you, don't you get know. it checked right, out. Right. Yeah. So it is really important, and it is a serious issue. And I know we joke around a lot, but no, and that's one thing about Alicia. She's gonna. She just totally her whole journey and stuff. Mm -hmm. And even though it's a month, it one month out of the year. I mean, we should be checking all the time. This is just kind of to remind people that if you haven't done it, to do it to make sure that you do check to make sure you don't have any lumps and and make sure that you do get it checked out. Even though you, sh it should be all the time that we're doing this. And uh, so, tell us a couple of the different myths. That okay, have like to one do of with the breast cancer. One of the myths are they feel like if your family, all your, your family members have had breast cancer, there's a good chance that you'll have it. That's not true. There is a gene, but that is not true. It doesn't mean you'll definitely have breast cancer. Um, and all this information is online, which is great. And also, people used to be scared that breast cancer was contagious. Oh, wow. Yes, but it's not contagious <laughs> and stuff, so we're just letting everybody know. Um, also, about the mutilation of the different genes and mammograms, and it's just, it's just so important to get checked out, your health and your wellness. And yeah, absolutely. And one of those myths is that men can't get it, right? Right, right. Yes. Men can get it. They can't. It it's might a very be small rare. percentage, though. Yes. But still, it's that possibility. So people do, even if you're a guy listening, it, it, this isn't a just for women show. It's for you guys as well. You need to make sure you're checking as well. Right. We want everybody to be healthy. We want everybody to be healthy. <laughs> and there's so many events that go on across the United States and in the UK. Mm -hmm. It's really big. So this is worldwide Breast yeah. Awareness Month. month. Right. <laughs> Months. Months. <laughs> <laughs> As it should be. It should be every month. Every month. This yes. is true. We should to do keep it. keep ourselves healthy. Yes. Definitely. It should be a yearly thing. Very cool. And when we come back from our break, we're going to have a guest on who's going to talk more about her journey as well as bring more awareness to Breast Cancer Month here in October. So if you want to join the conversation, find us on Facebook or send us a message on Twitter at Dream It, Create It. And you can also find us at createitnowmedia.com, and we will be right back. Hey, it's Roxy from the 702 Rock Show. Right here at VegasAllNetRadio.com. Listen to my show every Friday, 4 to 5 p.m. to hear about local artists, musicians, fashion designers, and more right here in Las Vegas. So tune in every Friday, 4 to 5 p.m. to hear me, Michelle Roxy Davis, right here at BANR on the 702 Rock Show. We're blowing it out at Gene Woods Racing Experience, Las Vegas' newest premier outdoor adrenaline-powered gasoline go-karting track with speeds in excess of 45 miles per hour if you've got the bulls. We've got two-for-one Tuesdays. Buy one and your friend rides free. We've got $5 off coupons. And remember, on your birthday, members ride free. And they get a free Gene Woods Racing Experience t-shirt. Open Monday through Friday. 4 p.m. till 11, Saturday and Sunday, noon till 11. And we're located at 121 East Sunset Road in Las Vegas Boulevard at the Sports Center across from McCarran Airport. Come blow the doors off your competition at Gene Woods Racing Experience. Once you race here, you won't go anywhere else. Be there. Be there. Be there. Be there. Be there. Create it now. Now. Continue. Here again, Jonathan Stone, Dawn Elizabeth, and A.J. Boyden. You are listening to the Create It Now radio show with Jonathan Stone in studio and myself, Dawn Elizabeth. And we have a guest call in today to help bring awareness to Breast Cancer Month. So, Jonathan, why don't you give us a little introduction about our guest? Yes, our first guest, Alicia Skye, is one of my dearest friends. She's amazing. She's been through an incredible journey that she's going to share with us. Um, but it's somebody you can always count on uh, for editing, producing. She's just <laughs> she's done a one woman show. She's written a book. She's just an amazing person, and she helps other people. She has a foundation as well. So we love to welcome Miss Alicia Sky. 
How are you? Thank you. Thank you. I'm great. How are you guys? Good. Wonderful. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, and I'm a little uh, under the weather, so I sound a little sinusy. So <laughs> uh, in my beginning of being on your show, I'm going to inter- in, uh, invite myself back <laughs> okay. so that you can hear me. <laughs> hear but your really real voice. Like, yeah, yeah. And, um, and I got sick, and I take full responsibility for that, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. And I love the guy's voice who introduces you. That's like Jonathan Stone, right? <laughs> I want to take that guy with me everywhere. What? So we can call you Jonathan Stone? <laughs> so I was walking to a restaurant. Alicia Sky is here. <laughs> I like that idea. Yeah. Well, I hope right. you feel better soon. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm healing quickly and having wonderful conversations with friends and getting to laugh will aid in that quick healing. And so. your Thai soup yesterday, did that help? Oh, yeah. My my husband is an angel, and he brought me some Tom Ka coconut soup, and it was amazing. So. Oh, nice. Well, yeah, yeah, Kaylin is a great guy. Okay, so <laughs> we're talking about um, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we want to hear about your journey and what you would recommend for women and anybody who's listening. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's... It's, uh, it's an awesome month. You know, those of us who have been affected by breast cancer think about it every month or every week or, you know, whether they're going through it or someone in their family is going through it. But it's, it's nice, you know, just how we have months honoring other things to just reflect and remind ourselves to be grateful for our health and our family members and, and our lives. And even if you haven't been affected by cancer in, in any form, to reach out and contribute, volunteer, donate. You know, it's really a month of rallying and educating and getting people together. So it's, uh, it's cool to be a part of. And, um, yeah, right. my, my journey uh, began when I was 24. I was very young, and that's usually the first response I get is, oh, my gosh, you were yeah. so young. And uh, that was an interesting part of my diagnosis, too. So um, it was about a week after I turned 24, and I found a lump on my right breast, and then a second one had showed up the next day in my armpit area, and uh, I knew right away what it was, and I just had this flash come over me of health class in sixth grade where they pass around that gross silicone (laughs) boob and there's a little feed inside, right? Mm. And I was like, oh my gosh. I have cancer and I, you know, my boyfriend was spending the night at the time and I was like, I, I have a lump in my breast, I have cancer. He's like, you don't have cancer, you're just freaking it out. We had a very dramatic, unhealthy relationship mm. and, um, and and God bless him for it because I learned so much. <laughs> but, uh, but at the time I was just so pissed and I'm like, no, I know I have cancer. And if there's, you know, if there's anything about trusting your intuition, uh, I would just say, just listen and you know, it's, there's a difference between being a hypochondriac and really having a gut feeling about something, especially as a woman. So I called my doctor. I left a message. I couldn't get in until Tuesday. So now we're at, you know, weekend to Tuesday, only a couple of days. And, um, and she had even said to me, well, you know, you're really too young to get breast cancer. You don't have a family history. Uh, it's probably just a cyst. And I said, well, I know that it's cancer. And I want to go and get it checked out. So do you mm-hmm. want to make a referral or a recommendation for someone who could look into this for me? So she said, okay, well, then you're going to have to go do a mammogram and a biopsy, but who knows if your insurance is even going to cover it because of your age. Wow. So, um, And she did say that because I had the lump in my armpit that concerned her because that's uh, where the your lymph, lymph nodes, nodes are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I went right from there. Uh, this was all done through the Cedar sinai Network in Los Angeles, and I went to an imaging center and they did the mammogram and then I was waiting to do the biopsy and they came out and said, your insurance isn't going to cover it because of your age. Wow, that's <laughs> crazy. Like, Interesting. Well, here's my Amex. Thank God I have credit. And uh, let's, let's do this. So they did the biopsy and, um, and then the next day, you know, the doctor called me and said, hey, I don't want to talk to you over the phone. Can you come down and can you bring a family member? So, All right. That's a phone call. Yeah. Yeah. Not a, oh, looking God. forward to. Right. Just like, to tell you, right? Call, right? Yeah. 
right? I know. Yeah. I mean, this was like text messaging was like just starting to be cool. And, you know, I guess it's better to talk on the phone than send that type of a text. But really, it was just like so daunting. And she and I love this doctor and she's amazing. Um, and she did it in the most gentle, elegant way that she could have in regards to warning me to please come. This is important and you don't want to be by yourself. Right. You know? but- so she took very good care of me. She just had to be the messenger. So. Right, but for like 24 hours, you must have been going crazy. Uh, no, it was like an hour and a half. Oh, well, she told <laughs> oh, you to come good. in. I thought you said that she told you to come in the next day. Gotcha. No, 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 that, that same day. Sorry if I said that. And um, I was in the middle of an acting class, and I left, and my my friend who was there with me was in a panic, like, what's happening? What's going on? I hadn't told anybody because I didn't want to worry anybody. Right. And you'll see that as a common thread through Mm -hmm. women that get sick is you know they take care of everybody they don't want anyone to worry about them they're the doers they're the givers and you know uh and then ironically where do we get sick you know right by our hearts so again we can talk about that later but um so i i left and you know she gave me the bad news but it was stage three cancer and it was growing very fast and she said i needed to have surgery and get it removed immediately so um so now we're on i guess we're on thursday so she said, can you come in tomorrow? Let's have surgery tomorrow. So she wanted me to get a double mastectomy and begin reconstruction, you know, within 24 hours. And um, I said no because I was in a play that weekend, and I was a fairy <laughs> in a Midsummer Night's Dream, and I, I needed to wear this like, skimpy little costume. And the show must go on. <laughs> the show must go, go on. on. Yes. Yeah. Spielberg, are you listening? There so so <laughs> I'm, I'm available. Anyway, I uh, I went to Palm Springs. I did my play, and then um, as soon as the play was over, I drove back to L.A., and I got things ready, and we had surgery Monday morning. Wow. And uh, I did the double mastectomy. At first, I didn't want to because I thought, um, well, this is, you know, so bizarre. I probably wouldn't get it again in the other breast. I'm going to completely change the way that I live and think and eat and blah, 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 whatever creates cancer that I was less sure of at the time than I am now. And my doctor said, you know, really aesthetically, you want your breast to match. You know, if, if one's real and one is not, you know, they're going to do the best they can to reconstruct them to look identical, but they're going to feel different. They're going to look slightly different. And because I had cancer in my lymph nodes and it was in my lymph system, they had to take my nipple because nipples act as ducts for cancer. They can hide out there. Oh, wow. So I would have one real nipple, one fake nipple, you know. So I agreed um, for aesthetics that I should do both. Right. So, and it was the smart choice medically to reduce my risk. I mean, yeah. if I'm going to go this far, why risk it coming back? It's so not worth it. I hear so many stories of women that just did one and then it came back later. And um, not to say that that will always happen. And, you know, hopefully it shouldn't happen, but it does once in a while. And this is not something you want to deal with multiple times in your life. So uh, I agreed to do the double mastectomy. So we did that. I was in the hospital for a few days and... Uh, you know, then the healing process began, and uh, the worst part about that was the drain tubes. And uh, anyone who's had any type of major surgery knows that that sucks. You just have these right. tubes hanging. It was like I felt like an <laughs> alien. Um, and this whole journey was a very interesting test for my already failing relationship. <laughs> and my poor boyfriend at the time, uh, even though I didn't feel so bad for him then, uh, you know, he really he really dealt with a lot that he wasn't prepared to deal with, and he did the best that he could with what he had. And, um, you know, we, we both did, and it wasn't much. <laughs> so, right, right, yeah. um, then I began chemotherapy. That was for 18 weeks. Uh, again, I resisted. I didn't want to do chemo. I didn't want to lose my hair. I didn't want to be sick. I didn't want to deal with all of that stuff. But in the end, you know, my sister actually said to me, if, I was diagnosed or if, you know, we do this genetic testing and we find out you have this gene, then I would go and get a double mastectomy. And if I got cancer, I would get chemo and, you know, you doing it would be just as if I'm doing it. So please do this. Um, So I did it. Uh, Lost the hair. It was an interesting time. Um, You know, as a, as a woman, Dawn, we always want to be thinner. Yeah. Right. Like uh-huh. no matter what, even like we hit a goal weight and then we're like, I could still like trim up. Right. Like, I can you lose some more. <laughs> right. Yes. Way too skinny. <laughs> <laughs> Way too skinny. Cancer is uh, not a good diet to be on. 
<laughs> and I know that a lot of people um, have an opposite effect with chemo. Some of them gain weight. I did not. I looked like an alien again, just skinny, little bony, weird thing. But the funny part was, you know, I was trying to go out and have a good time and still enjoy my life, which I did. And I was running into people I hadn't seen in a long time, ironically enough. And now I'm wearing a wig. And, you know, the wig looks amazing because wigs never look bad. It's just right. Like perfect hair all the time and whatever color you want. And I ran into this couple of guys I hadn't seen in a while, and they were like, Alicia, what are you doing? You look amazing. Like, are you on some new workout regimen? <laughs> my friend just looked at me like, oh, my God, this is so awkward. <laughs> and I just thought that was the funniest friggin' thing, and it kept coming up over and over. I would run into people, you look amazing. What are you doing? Oh, my gosh. You know, and I wasn't really posting a whole bunch about it. Back then, it was MySpace. So it wasn't like the thing where you update on your phone every two seconds what you're eating. And um, I wasn't eating much because I wasn't keeping it down. But anyhow, a lot of people hadn't known. So I was inspired by all of that to make a short film. And I made a short film called Lose Weight with Cancer. And it's about selling cancer as a weight loss product. And <laughs> the, it's, it's about a 15-minute film. Uh, all my friends are in it. I produced it, directed it directed it and wrote it and it's a lot of fun um a handful of people find it wildly offensive and that's okay too because i know that it's making many many people laugh during a challenging time in their life which i said earlier aids in our healing and um, you can watch the film for free uh, on my website which is laughaboutcancer.org and i think it's under the media section it's hosted by vimeo um or you could donate and i would send a dvd either way oh, but nice. go enjoy it's a lot of fun uh it got a lot of attention we had a big screening we had a big party it was uh it was awesome it was a really nice up uplifting thing to be working on um which i later learned was a distraction <laughs> my relationship and my movie and other things I was doing were all keeping me from really focusing on and realizing that I had cancer. And just like every other traumatic and tragic thing that I had been through in my life, I was starting to bury it and just move forward and charge forward because, you know, I'm the doer, I'm the giver, I'm the go-getter, I'm going to take care of everybody else. So it wasn't until my third chemo session when my boyfriend broke up with me that I had to learn how to ask for help because I didn't have someone to drive me to chemo. He took me to my first two chemos. And I remember this so vividly, sitting on the floor of my apartment crying because I was so scared to pick up the phone and ask one of my millions of wonderful friends for a ride to the hospital because I didn't want to bother anyone with my cancer. And I didn't want anyone to feel uncomfortable sitting in a hospital room with a bunch of sick people. And, you know, it's going to be an all-day affair. And it was the last minute. It was like the day before. So to the people who know me and love me, like Jonathan, like, yeah. of course you would course. be there. If you, you know what I mean? I would camp course, out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it, it's, it's so silly. But I promise you guys this is how I felt. And this is how a lot of people feel when I talk to them that are going through this. And I had to ask for help. So I very selectively went through my phone books and I called my friend James and she was someone that I did the play with. And she wasn't one of my best friends. She's a dear, sweet friend. But I called her because she had mentioned to me once that her mom had breast cancer and she went with her to her chemos. And she had said, you know, kind of off the cuff at some point, if you ever need me to go with you, if you ever need anything, just call me. And, you know, everybody says that, but do you ever take them up on it? Usually not. Right. So I called her because I thought, well, she at least knows what this is like. So it'll be less awful for her than it would be for somebody else. So, like, again, I'm trying to take care of other people and having a really hard time asking for help. Right. So um, so she took me, and it was, it was awesome, and, and I love her. And, and then I had to look at, okay, well, what's, what's next? What's coming up next? Like, I have radiation. I have more chemo appointments. I'm going to have surgery soon. I have follow-up appointments. Like, you know, I wasn't even working full-time. I had to ask for help all the time. I got so good at asking for help. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and it was uncomfortable every single time, but I knew that I had to do it. And I knew that if I did it, things would just be easier. And finally, my friend Trish had said to me, you know, when someone gets to help you, they earn their wings. 
why do you mm-hmm. get to be the one that earns your earns your wings all the time? You know, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. yeah, that's want to nice give other people an opportunity. Yeah, so that really rang true for me. Like, wow, like other people will enjoy helping me the way that I enjoy helping other people. And um, and another friend had said to me during this time, like, you know, you can't be a superhero all the time. My friend Gavin said this to me. If you're a superhero, people can't identify with you. You need a human trait. (laughs) People need to be able to relate to you. And and in order to inspire them, they have to feel that the things that you've accomplished are possible because you're also human. So part of that humanity and humility is going to be getting sick sometimes and asking for help sometimes. You know, so these were big lessons, big, big lessons. And, uh, and I had to get good at it. And I think asking for help and receiving from people is a lesson that women, uh, you know, can often learn the hard way. And if they can just learn it without getting sick or (laughs) learn it, you know, without dealing with trauma, then awesome. And, um, Jonathan and I have an amazing friend named Andrea Quinn, and she teaches a curriculum called the Quinn Essentials, and we talk about receiving, and we talk about asking, and she's helping so many women learn this and do this during, you know, any any time in their life. So I highly recommend her. It's andreaquinncoaching.com. But um, to continue, where was I? Yeah, so... Right, but also, it's not just women, though. I think men also have to learn how to receive instead of trying to fix things all the time. Oh, my God, I just sound like a girl. Um, (laughs) But that's what I always get yelled at about, so... (laughs) That is true, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, everyone can learn that lesson, definitely. We have to learn how to receive. Absolutely. You have to, and really, we're receiving so that we can give even more. You know, one of the things Andrea said is when you take your in-breath, which is receiving, your out-breath is so much bigger, which is the giving, right? Uh, uh, yeah. It's yeah. Kind of, yeah, it's kind of like putting your safety mask on first before helping others. Yes, so, and that tells um, that on the plane all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, again, it's about really receiving. <laughs> hard, hard lesson. Um, so my journey goes on for a couple of years. So to spare however much time we have left, um, well, we have two I minutes really... until a commercial. <laughs> so just okay, let you I'll know. Finish my cancer, my, my surgery story. <laughs> I did radiation. Then, um, then I got implants, which was so very exciting because reconstructed expanders are painful and weird. And, uh, it's like having little apples in your, in your chest. And it was hard to, like, flirt with new boys and hug them like that. And that was my main priority. Uh, And so then I got the implants, and then later I got my nipples. And um, that's when I finally felt confident to start dating again. Nice. And you met your husband. (laughs) I did. That wasn't for a couple of years. So I still had to go through some growing pain relationships until we found each other. And you guys are a great couple. We're a lot of fun. You are. Yeah. Yeah, he he gets it, and he gets me, and I get him. And we're not trying to fix each other or save each other. We're just coexisting in joy. You know, Neil Donald Walsh, who wrote Conversations with God, says, the purpose of relationship is not to have another who might complete you, but to have another with whom you might share your completeness. Nice. Very nice. Very cool. It's so true, but, you know, we have to go through things to really feel complete sometimes, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Agreed. Yep. And uh, we do have to take a commercial break, and we would love to have you stay on with us if you can. And I do want to find out a little bit more about where you are now and what you're doing and if you are cancer-free. And those are some things I'd love to hit after the break, if you don't mind, when we come back. Absolutely. Excellent. So you are listening to the Create It Now radio show. If you'd like to join the conversation, please find us on Facebook or on Twitter at Dream It, Create It. And you can also give us a call in studio, 702-731-1230. And we will be right back. Have you ever wondered what's the difference between those that dream about a better life and those who create it? Are you waiting to accomplish your dreams and goals? Let's create it now and put your dreams into motion. Hi, this is AJ Playden. Don Elizabeth. And Jonathan Stone. With the Create It Now radio show, join the three of us Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Become a part of the conversation on the Create It Now radio show about why some people create it. See you every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday on KLAV AM 1230. 
everyone. This is New Media Vegas, your Sin City webmasters in Las Vegas, Nevada. More than just web design, complete integrated marketing with inspired innovations in delivery of your new media message, putting the groove and the backbeat back in your brand. The hottest in design trends with the latest innovations and marketing techniques. Call New Media Vegas at 702-517-0184. Or visit us online at www.newmediavegas.com. Don't forget to check out our online magazine, Sin City Presents, featuring business, technology, fashion, dining, and entertainment news. 702-517-0184. 702-517-0184. Those who can do this is created now. now. Here again, your host, Jonathan Stone, Dawn Elizabeth, and A.J. Boyden. Welcome back to the Create It Now radio show. If you are just tuning in with us, we are talking with Alicia Skye about her journey with breast cancer and how she's bringing awareness and how this is October, the Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And so, Alicia, I was wondering, how, how are you now? Where are you health-wise now? I am eight years cancer-free. Ooh, Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm great. My uh, my doctor just did that all that BRAC gene testing on me, and I'm negative, but I knew that. And um, we had done some initial testing originally, which had said I was negative, and then we went to a deeper testing, which said I was negative. Uh, so that's all good news to me. Um, it confuses the hell out of my medical team <laughs> because I was so young when I got it. And, um, you know, the percentage changes every year, but right now I think it's about 7% of breast cancer as women under 40, which is a really low percentage, and it's even lower than that for women in their 20s. And uh, but, but I'm good. I will never get cancer again, and I can have children, and it doesn't, uh, according to my tests, seem that my children will get cancer, or if they do, it's not because of me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I'm great. And uh, one of the good things about me being able to have children is, and I'm not sure if you guys know this, but chemotherapy can often leave people sterile. It's uh, it's a very, very common thing. And there's an amazing nonprofit out there called Fertile Action uh, that my one of my dear friends runs. So if anyone who's listening is has been recently diagnosed and they want to preserve their eggs or do anything to help their fertility, then um, then they can check out Fertile Action. And Alice over there will take very good care of them. Um, but I was, I was very lucky. I, um, well, I didn't have time to freeze my eggs or do any of that. As you guys know, I had to go right into everything. But um, as it turns out, I, you know, my period came back after chemo was over, and I can have children. So it's really good news. Yes, I'm, absolutely. So let me I'm ask you, healthy and I'm happy. That's great. Alicia, let me ask you a question then. So what age do you recommend um, when we get tested now? Because since well, it's changed and stuff, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's different for everybody. And um, I know you were talking about mammograms earlier, and I actually don't do mammograms. I do thermography. And thermography is basically a heat sensor photo of your body. And it can detect cells multiplying, which is what happens when we have cancer. Our cells start to multiply very quickly, and these are bad cells that are multiplying. Um, it's a very basic way to explain it, but uh, thermography will detect it uh, very, very right. fast. And I'm not saying that I'm anti-mammogram. I think, um, you know, if all you can do is what your insurance covers and you're comfortable getting mammograms, then go ahead and do it. You know, but I, for me personally, I don't like the idea of radiation to my breast and I don't like the idea of the, um, you know, the impact that the machine has on your breast right. that feels traumatic physically. And uh, for me, thermography really works great. And you can start thermography at any age. I mean, there's women that are bringing their daughters starting at 16. And, you know, the idea isn't that we live in fear or we've created fear and now we have to go get all these genetic testings and go get mammograms and check ourselves or get preventative mastectomies. I don't believe in that type of living because I believe we manifest through our emotions. But I think if it's something that you want to do, just like a yearly doctor's appointment, you know, to check your heart and your cholesterol, then go do your thermography and just get yourself checked. And, you know, it, it doesn't just pick up your chest. It could pick up other things that are happening in your body. You right. Know, so it searches the whole body. 
Yeah, you can yeah. do your whole body. It's a body you can just scan. Do certain right. areas. Mm -hmm. um, there's uh, there's an amazing thermography place in Sherman Oaks run by Hillary Smith, and um, it's advanced medical thermography. If anyone wants to look it up, and if you're not in Los Angeles, which I know a lot of people are not. Uh, you know, you could just Google thermography or you can reach out to Hillary's office and see who she recommends as well. Um, Dr. Smith is, she's amazing and she takes very good care of me. And my oncologist uh, is a little on the fence about it. She would rather me do mammograms because that's what she knows is, you know, 100% diagnosable and, you know, all and, and all of that. But uh, I feel really good about it. That's I great. feel really good. I feel that I'm clear and I, I know that I'm living my life in a way now that is not going to lead me back to cancer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everyone <laughs> is always trying to figure out why do we get cancer. And I think that's just a case-by-case -case basis. Everybody has their own answer for why they got cancer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for a lot of people it's genetics, and for a lot of people it's environment and stress. And for a lot of people, it's a spiritual thing that this was in their plan before they got here, and these are lessons they and their family needed to learn. And, you know, all of those answers are true. So it's just whatever yeah. it is for you and what you're going to take away from it. And, um, you know, it was it was an unfortunate thing. It was expensive. It was a pain in the butt and uh, definitely inconvenient. Right. right. Yes. <laughs> but, um, it was just yeah, a blip in the radar. Just to, yeah, I wouldn't change it. You know, I've been able to help a lot of people and impact a lot of people. I have a whole new perspective on life and health and relationships and, you know, my standards and how I see my life and what I want and what's important and what's not important. And, you know, you don't have to go through something potentially life-threatening to learn those things. You can, you can read other people's stories and be inspired by them and change, change your life. Mm -hmm. You don't have to get sick. No, and it's an, you have an amazing story, and we really appreciate you explaining to everybody the whole journey about it. But I want people also to know what you're doing now about how you're helping others yeah, with your organization, um, your foundation. <laughs> we're always doing we're always doing something. Yeah. Um, my my foundation is the Alicia Sky Breast Cancer Organization, and it's a five hundred one c three nonprofit and. Uh, we do a little bit of everything. Uh, we receive hair donations, which we forward on to Pantene Beautiful Links. Um, I also love Locks of Love. We send to Pantene because Pantene has an 8-inch hair requirement, uh, where uh, Locks of Love is 10 inches. 10 and inches. not everybody can do 10, you know, and uh, it's not that I favor one over the other. We just get a lot of donations under 10, so we wind up sending them there. And um, I've been doing a lot of speaking uh, high schools and colleges and things like that, and even, or even just like a group of women. I'll do women's groups, women's retreats, things like that. They'll bring me out, and I'll just speak to women and, and teenagers and high school age, college age. Just talk to anybody. Share, them, share with them my story. They ask a lot of questions, and uh, it's so, so fascinating. We have such a smart youth. <laughs> I know people feel like we're getting stupider and we're on our way to idiocracy, but um, there's some really, really smart kids out there and, uh, and they want to learn now. They're compassionate. You know, they see their parents and their families going through diseases and trauma and they want to know what they can do to prevent it. And so that is, that is really smart. Uh, I wrote a book. It's called, I got mm -hmm. my tits done in Beverly Hills. <laughs> Cause I did. <laughs> and I didn't plan to. And, um, I have, we just got manager. fined. I just want you to know that. <laughs> My yeah, I know. The it's... engineer just jumped out of his seat and pushed the bleep button. <laughs> <laughs> He's giving me the look. That's hilarious. Yeah. Um, my agency who has film rights to my book uh, was talking about that, too, that the name of the book, you know, maybe like Oprah can't say the name of your book. I'm like, OK, well, you know, that's fine. And now Oprah's doing other things. But, um, yeah, we'll cross that bridge when we when we get to it. But uh, the book is about my journey. I actually wrote it during the time that I had cancer. It's a journal. So I'm more or less publishing my journal with photos. And I was inspired to do that because when I was going through it, I couldn't find anything for women under 40 about cancer. And I wasn't just looking for pictures on what it was going to look like, which I share in my book, but also what happens to our careers? What happens to our relationships? How does our family deal with this? 
You know, what are, what are my different medical options? My doctors are only giving me one or two choices. You know, what about holistic versus Western? You know, all those things I talk about in my book. And then um, you guys will, when you read it, you'll go through that journey with me and get those questions answered with me as I did. And uh, it's a great book. So we are in the process of getting it published, and we are open and ready to receive the perfect publisher. So I know Jonathan's going to send that person my way. Absolutely. Excellent. <laughs> Very cool. That. So Alicia, <laughs> with all this, this whole journey that you've been through unexpectedly and all the different pieces that you've gone through, when... Um, later in life, like, what is your legacy that you want to leave for the world? Hmm. Well, I would just love everyone to know that through just a small shift in their perception and with their sense of humor, they can truly lessen the severity of any illness or trauma. Right. People just Very need nice. to friggin' laugh more and not <laughs> take life so seriously. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes. And Dawn's yeah. being really modest. Tell her, actually, Dawn was part of Locks of Love. Tell us about that, yes. Dawn. I had um, grown out my hair in order to donate it, and I grew it to donate 18 inches. Wow. Yes, it took quite a few years <laughs> to grow it that long, but I did, and I have very short hair now, and there may be a day where I regrow it just to donate it again. Oh, thank you. That's amazing. You know, a, a human hair wig, if you're purchasing one, is really expensive. And um, I know American Cancer Society has a wig program where mm -hmm. you can get human hair wigs. Um, but, again, I didn't know that at the time, and I was just trying to get some hair. Right. And I had a custom one made, and it was $1,700. Oh, wow. It was $1,700. Yeah. For, is that 1700 <laughs> yeah. Is that like a dollar a strand? Yeah. Thank How you. many strands yeah. are Thank in you that? for justifying How many? How many nickels is that? Jonathan? Right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, I mean, it's, there's, I think there is some great different organizations, including yours out there, just helping people go through the journey. Because until we really, anyone really hits that cross in the road, I don't think they really look into it or really know much about it. So, right, right. So really and, appreciate you know, you what you guys, what you're doing for everybody and helping get the word out and helping others who've gone, are, are going through the same thing you did. Thank you. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just amazing. the beginning. Yeah, Kaylin, eventually we're going to have to cut his hair. That's her husband. <laughs> he, how long, he's got long, long hair. Yeah, he's, he's probably got 20 inches of hair to donate. Yeah. But, um, he, he's albinistic, so his hair is white, white. And it's virgin hair, never been dyed. And um, he's, you know, he has it long because he's a musician and he's in a rock band. And it's, it's for his career. But when that uh, can get a physical shift, like if he can be a rock star and have shorter hair, then he may donate it. But he's gotten some pretty sweet offers well, for sure. many thousands of dollars wow. <laughs> to buy that hair. Mm. But, um, you know, if I have any say... And he's he's such a generous, caring man. He is. Be sure that's that's where it's going to wind up when the time comes. So. All right. And can you actually tell us your website again and where people can find you? Absolutely. It's laughaboutcancer.org. And we're also on Facebook, the Alicia Sky Breast Cancer Organization. And I don't have a separate Twitter for my nonprofit. I just have my regular Twitter, which is Alicia Sky, E L Y S I A S K Y E. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. I really enjoyed having a conversation with you, helping us get the word out and helping others. So thank you so much thank for joining you. us today. Yes, it's an oh. absolute delight. Oh, and then we hope you feel better. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. I, I knew better. I knew that during a very busy time right now, I'm about to move into a new house. Congratulations. And, uh, thank you. <laughs> and I'm also finishing a big project for work and I wasn't nurturing myself during this time. I wasn't taking time to laugh. I wasn't doing my daily spiritual stuff, which is meditation and things like that. And, you know, I'm, I eat fine. I sleep fine. But I really require those other things to stay healthy. And um, and I didn't put myself first. So uh, thank you, Cole, mm -hmm. for reminding me. There you go. <laughs> there yeah, you go. I remember when I was at your house last time, you made me sit down and get grounded with the earth and all that stuff and the light. 
I'm kind yeah. of a hippie, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we need that sometimes, though. <laughs> kind of a hippie. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you. We hope that you take care of yourself. We talk to you again soon. And, and keep helping others. Yeah, so when you're out here, please come on to this station. You got it. You're All welcome, right. guys. It's been a blessing. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. Take care. And for the listeners, you are listening to the Create It Now radio show. If you want to find us on Facebook or on Twitter at Dream It, Create It. And we will be right back. Are you ready to make more money? Do you want to set yourself apart in your industry? Then you need to join the USA Victory Tour. Jace Souter will be sharing the three key skills of how he went from a brand new idea to earning over five figures in one day. The USA Victory Tour will be in 18 cities across the U.S. Where will they be next? Find out at usavictorytour.com. Don't see your city listed? Bring the USA Victory Tour to your city. Log on now to usavictorytour.com. When small business wins, America wins. Why wait to accomplish your dreams when you can create them now? It's time to put your dreams into motion. Create it now. Hi, this is Jonathan Stone with the Create It Now radio show on KLAV 1230 AM. Join us every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. We will help you move from a dream state to a create state. Become a part of a conversation on the Create It Now radio show about why some people dream it versus why other people create it. Every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. on KLAV. Welcome back to Create It Now. Now. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. Here again, your host, Jonathan Stone, Don Elizabeth, and A.J. Boyden. Welcome back to the Create It Now radio show. If you're just tuning in, we had Alicia Sky on bringing awareness to Breast Cancer Month, which is this month of October, and hearing her story and help how she helps others in who are going through the same journey she did. And while our last journey. segment was going, we had a, somebody show up in studio to say hello. We have yes. Carol with us, and she is the booker that we were talking about yesterday. Ooh, just say <laughs> hello. Hello, everybody. There we go. Cool. So while you're here, we just wanted you to kind of let our listeners know exactly what they can do and if they want to become a part of the Create It Now radio show. How could they get a hold of you and what information should they send you? Well, they can reach me at carol at createitnowmedia.com. Excellent. And they um, I would need their name, their topic, um, an email address, and a contact number. Like a phone number mm -hmm. as a well. Phone number. So and if they can include their website, that would be phenomenal as well. So kind of like the more information they give you up front, the easier it's going to be to kind of throw to them into them segments. In. And excellent. Very cool. Yeah. And we're actually really lucky to have Carol. She's an amazing organizer and runs huge events all over the country and stuff. So we're very thankful that you were joining us and being part of the Create Now team. I am very honored and blessed to be a part of it. So I'm excited to be here. And if you come in more often, we'll have to get you a pink smushy, too, for your microphone. Oh, uh, no. I think I want purple. Ooh, Ooh, purple. All right. We can do that, too. Right. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, so if anybody's interested in possibly becoming a part of the Create It Now radio show and fitting into any of our new segments that we have coming up, then please go ahead and send them to send your information to Carol. Carol at createitnowmedia.com. Carol with a C. Yes. I know. And no E. And no, no E. Yep. I was so just it's C-A-R-O-L at createitnowmedia.com. Excellent. Do you want to tell them about the segments? And uh, <laughs> so the different segments that we're, we are bringing guests on have to do with people who are making a difference in the community, as well as people who either have businesses or are in different parts of their own business where they can give tips and tools of something that they're doing whether right. it's how to network or how to ask for help like we talked about earlier today being, i think that was great advice absolutely to receive, yeah. so different advice that you have that would help our diff our audience kind of find some tips and tools to take action and create it now and uh 
So if you feel that you fall into any of that or you know somebody who does, please contact Carol so that we can see if it's a great fit for the show. Right. And there's no like age recommendation or anything like that. We're looking for children, adults, anybody that also makes a difference in the community and what it means to them. I think the one um, the one age that we might have to kind of cap- like stop at would be like babies who don't speak. Like... Babies are cute, but bringing a one-year-old on, I'm not so sure yet. Yeah, but ones if they have a translator. There's a lot of baby translators out there. This, well, then let's bring the translator on. <laughs> well, you need the baby to translate to the translator, or the translator to translate. Uh-oh. Just need a trans. Yeah, that's too confusing. <laughs> exactly. I think Jonathan could have a conversation with a one-year-old. Well, Probably I'm pretty much could. doing it right now. <laughs> I feel like two of them. <gasps> oh. oh. Yes. Yeah. Anyway. Ow, I just got kicked I'm from both sides. Yes, but so if you do want to be a part of the conversation, you can also find us on Facebook. Don't forget to like our page at Create It Now, as well as follow us on Twitter at Dream It Create It. And our website, createitnowmedia.com, where you can have all the archived shows as well as Become an Angel with us. Jonathan, explain to us what Becoming an Angel would entail. Well, becoming an angel until being able to help somebody or help the community, make a difference, um, take action, show people how to take action. We're looking for charity organizations, nonprofits, even for-profits that are there willing to help and help the community. It's really important to help the community and become a community. And that's what why we started the whole Create It Now uh, show is to build a community and it's just all the amazing people that we have and that are keep joining us and we're very thankful and now that we have carol with us as well and our engineer that wants to hurt us from what alicia said before but it's all good that's right it's the name of our buck yes so i think that's illegal no he's rolling his eyes I don't think it's <laughs> no illegal. all right we all won't right. repeat it don't worry so next week on our show we have lots of different guests coming in our first guest if you want to tell us just a quick Yes, we have Aggie Corbin coming in. She does crowdfunding. She's also a major booker as well. Uh, she's just a wonderful woman. It'll be really good if it, people are starting new businesses um, or musicians or artists. That's a good way to actually raise money is by crowdfunding. Excellent. Yes, and she, you know, and nonprofits as well. But there's different rules for profit and not for profit with crowdfunding. There's actually different sites and regulations. And so she's going to kind of give us the information on all of that. Uh, Yes, and she owns actually a crowdfunding site, so she'll really be able to help people out, and she'll probably do some special stuff for the Create It Now audience and members out there and really be able to help. Very cool, and that's on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, we have Al Jensen, Magic Al, coming back, and he's actually going to be our guest interviewer, and he's going to be interviewing you, Jonathan Stone, so we can get to know more about you. and my skeletons are coming out. What you've been doing and how you started to create it now, so we're going to get to know you a little bit more on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, we have Bob Golden and Paul Shortino. So Paul Shortino is in Raiding the Rock Vault on the Las Vegas Strip. And Bob Golden is coming in. And they're going to be talking about gratitude. It's all about gratitude. And be thankful for what you have as well as pushing and giving your gratitude to other people. And they have different regiments that you can do. And it's very freeing. And it's a great concept. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So please don't miss our show next week we are live tuesday wednesdays and thursdays from 3 p.m to 4 p.m and rebroadcast on the same days in the evenings 11 p.m to midnight on vegas all net radio like us on facebook and find us on twitter follow us at dream it create it that's all the time we have today on the create it now radio show Relisten listen tonight at 11 p.m. or find the archive shows at www.createitnowmedia.com. And we will see you back here same time next week on Tuesday. You don't want to miss it. So dream big, take action, and create it now. Have an amazing weekend. Say goodbye, Carol. Bye.